Hello everyone. My name is Richard Janokas, a graduate consultant in the technical enablement team. And welcome to this session entitled Animation in ArcGIS Pro. Over the next 15 minutes or so, we will discuss how to get started animating in Pro, hopefully dispelling some misconceptions about how much time and work is truly needed to take advantage of data with a temporal element and showing you just how easy it is to bring your maps to life in the form of an animation. Here we see an animation built in ArcGIS Pro. Data consists of daily recorded ship positions for various countries across the entire year in 1770. Now you might think to build this animation, we required maybe 365 frames, one for every day that data was captured. But in fact, it only required two frames. It's really that simple to build an animation. So let's build a new one from scratch and switch over to ArcGIS Pro to see how it's done in practice. Here we have earthquake data courtesy of the British Geological Survey. They've recorded UK earthquakes with modern instruments since the 1960s. And as a geologist, I think the fact that this data is now readily available in the Living Atlas is really cool and well worth taking advantage of. There's 128 events recorded here over 53 years. But again, in order to build an animation that covers all of this time, showing the earthquakes yearly, we only need two key frames. So let's get building our animation. The first thing to do is check that our data is time enabled and that it is switched on as such. The first thing we do is go to the properties of our layer and the time menu in this left hand column. Here we can select layer time and indicate the field to which our time data is referring and click OK. In doing so, we activate the time tab in the ribbon and also the time slider here on screen. Currently it's showing the entire span of our data, whereas we want to show just a snippet at a time. So we will hit the time enable button and you'll see that that has changed to just a small snippet. Next thing we need to do is get ready to animate. By going to the View tab and the Animation group, we can click the word, but, the word Add. And that activates both the Animation tab in the ribbon and automatically brings up the timeline down here at the bottom of the screen. So now we can start building our animation. And in order to pick our first keyframe, there are three key things we need to make sure are as we want before locking that in. They are the span, the time, and the extent. By time, I'm referring to the length of time any one snippet of our animation will refer to. Now this will be set to one day if we want to show daily change, one week if we want to show weekly change, and so on. We want to show annual change, so we're gonna set it to one year. We go to the time tab, and the current time group here on the left. Make sure that the span is set to one year. We'll also lock that. By locking the span, we can be sure that it won't change by accident as we're making our animation. The second thing we want to make sure is correct is the time. When do we want our animation to begin in this first keyframe? At what time? Now we can set this manually in the current time group by clicking here in the start box and typing it in. In our case, we want the 1st of January, 1967 and hit enter. That is when the BGS first began annually recording earthquake data, meaning when we build our animation, we'll have a clean and consistent period of data with no data gaps where recording wasn't happening. Because we locked the span, the end time was automatically changed for us, reflected here in the current time group, as well as here on the time slider. So that's the span and that's the time set as we would like. The final thing to check is the extent. What spatial area do we want to be viewing at the beginning of our animation? We can move the map around however we like, 
including zooming out and zooming in, until we're happy with its location, which I now am. So, now that the span, time, and extent are all as we need, I can create the first keyframe. So now we want to capture the next 53 years worth of data in just one more keyframe. Again, we'll check the span, time, and extent. We're showing annual change, so the span will remain as one year. And in order to not confuse the viewer, we'll leave the extent the same as well. So all they have to focus on is the changing data on screen. So now we just change the time. What we're going to do is change this to the, our very last date of the animation. We can either do this in the current time group, but on this occasion, I'll use the time slider, grabbing this right hand tab and just pulling it to the end. You'll notice as I move through time, the data on screen also changes to reflect this. And now we're at the end, we're happy that our span, time and extent are all set. I'm going to lock in the second keyframe. And just like that, in no time at all, we've technically built our first animation. You might think we've only captured the beginning and the end. What about everything in between? And ArcGIS Pro will have the ability to take our first keyframe and our last keyframe and work out everything that should come in between in what order and at what time. This makes it really easy for us to build an animation. We don't have to worry adding a keyframe for every single year. We just need the start and the end. If I use the return playback button here in the timeline to jump to the beginning of our animation and click play, it's awfully quick at the default three seconds. So if I go into the animation tab, I can change this here in the playback group to set our duration at 15 seconds. Again, I'll return play back to the beginning and click play. You'll see our time slider moves through time as it does in the timeline and the data changes on the animation in accordance with time. This looks a bit patchy, but this is because of the processing power of Pro and the way it renders on screen. When exporting the animation, we can be sure it'll be cre uh, crisp and clean and a smooth animation. The animation is presenting data through time. So including the changing dates within the video will help communicate this to the user. And this is where the use of overlays comes into play. These are available here in the overlay group. The first thing we're going to add is a static overlay in the form of a title. By choosing title, a text box appears on screen, and we can type in whatever title we like. I'm going with UK Earthquakes. And we can hit the red cross to confirm that. I'll minimize the time slider. And you can see by default, the title appears top, center, and above our map. Not very ideal for the user. By going to the edit group and selecting properties, we have a full range of options to customize our title. We can jump to the overlays menu here, and click the settings for our chosen overlay. And here we get all the normal text editing options that you would expect, including the ability to change the font, change the font style, and also the font color, and hit apply. That's now much more visible but the position is still off. So if we return, you see down here, there are nine preset options for adjusting the position of our title. But by clicking adjust position, we actually have the option to drag our title wherever we'd like on our animation. We can also use the vertices of our text box to change the font size however we like. This is in addition to the standard numerical format available up here. Once I'm happy with the title, I'm going to use the red X to confirm it. Now we want to add the changing map time, and this will be in the form of a dynamic map text. By dropping down the menu on the overlay group, we can go down to dynamic text and select map time. 
This starts as a predefined HTML element, which we can customize fully. By clicking the red X, I can show you what it looks like by default. We have a day, a month, and a year, as well as a time for both the start and end point of our animation at this particular snippet. For our animation, this is too much information for the user, as we only wish to show the year. So by going over to the animation properties and clicking this pencil icon, we can edit this fully. We only want the start date, so I will, I will remove the end time half. You'll notice that as I'm editing this here, it also changes on screen dynamically, so you can see how it will look when finished. We don't want to have the time displayed, so I'll remove the word long as well as the pre preceding character. Now we just need to remove the day and the month whilst retaining the year. I'll do this by replacing the word short with the standard HTML format for a year, which is four lowercase y's. And now you can see our date on screen is exactly as we'd like, just the year in question. I can go into the settings as before to make sure that the font matches, as well as remove the call out that by default displays behind the map time and hit apply. The final thing to do with our map time is adjust the position just as we did with the title. I can drag it freely to wherever I like, meaning I can place it just below the title and use the vertices to drag it and resize until I'm comfortable with where it sits. I can hit the red X. Now we have a title that tells our user what our animation is showing, as well as a dynamic map time that will change with the animation, giving the user that extra bit of context so they know at what pace the years are changing and at what, what the year is at any given time in the animation. By clicking play in the playback, button, we can see the map time changes as the animation plays. This is really useful for the user as they now have a better understanding of what they're looking at and can digest the data in a more feasible way. And just like that, we've built an animation that shows changing data over time, but also has some useful overlays to give context to the viewer as to what they're looking at and when they're looking at it as well. The last thing to do then with our animation is to export it. By going to the export group in the animation tab and clicking movie, we can export our movie in whatever format we like. There's a number of preset formats. I'm gonna choose YouTube video in this case. Once you select where you wish to save it, we can go to the file export setting where we can change the format of our video, the frames per second, as well as the number of frames that will be exported, which influences the time and length of our animation. A larger number of frames per second will take longer to export, but result in a cleaner and crisper animation that will be more pleasant to view. You may be willing to wait quite a bit of time in order for that to export, but it'll be well worth it. And fortunately, we don't have to wait right now, as I can show you one that we've made earlier. In roughly 10 minutes, you can build an animation just like this, that changes over time, showing the frequency of earthquakes as well as their location. And the viewer not only gets an idea of where these have occurred over 53 years, but also an idea of what year they're looking at at any given moment and at what pace the year is changing. It's not only a temporal element that you can capture either. You can capture a change over a spatial element by moving the camera or panning your view over your map. This isn't complicated either. And in fact, I've made one right here with only the addition of two extra frames. By going from two frames to four frames, I've achieved the exact same animation 
but instead have a pan across the United Kingdom from north to south, giving viewers a bit more spatial context as well as to where earthquakes are occurring exactly, close to which cities, in a way that is easy to view and was not too complicated to build either. So hopefully you've learned that building an animation in ArcGIS Pro really is not that complicated and doesn't have too much to it. In less than 15 minutes, you can add just two keyframes to your animation and bring your temporal data to life, showing how it changes both over time and over space if you wish. Add a title and a dynamic map time to give the viewer that extra bit of context and produce something that you can publish on social media or in your website for viewers to use as a useful tool rather than a static map. Thank you for listening.